What is the first thing that comes in your mind when you hear the phrase fantasy routes? In this video, we learn what exactly are fantasy routes and how they can help in our learning process. Welcome to the network trip. Router OS allows network administrators to make magic, but uh, how fantasy routes are going to fit into this new version of the operating system? What exactly are fantasy routes? Fantasy routes is a route simulator. Basically, it's a feature that is used to generate a large number of routes. This is just for lab environments. Let's assume that we are in this uh, learning process. We are learning about different network protocols, how we are going to implement those in router OS. Basically, we are going through all the videos here in the network trip. So we are in a testing environment. So we can use fantasy routes in a topology similar to that one, for example, where we are playing with OFPF. We are playing with route redistribution. What is going to be the behavior for those devices when managing X amount of routes? So instead of going via scripting or adding routes manually into those devices, we can go, for example, to one of those routers and we can use fantasy routes. So basically that means that we can generate X amount of routes that are coming from a supernet. So what exactly is a supernet? This is the prefix, the original prefix from which all the subnets that we are going to generate will come from. Of course, we can do this task using scripts, for example, or we can do it manually, but fantasy routes are going to be faster and simple. We are going to manage easily all that amount of routes. We can remove all of them. We can make changes to those routes because they will be in a separate structure inside the router OS configuration. Behind the scenes, fantasy routes is going to go through a random process to calculate those subnets and then it's going to add those entries into the routing table, which are some possible scenarios where we can use fantasy routes. For example, what is going to be the behavior in our multi-area OFPF topology if we are advertising 500 routes or 2,000 routes, or we can be generating 1 million routes. So what is going to be the behavior in the hardware? Is that device going to support that amount of routes? Or maybe we are testing security policies. So we are going to generate the routes and then we are going to start playing with that. So once those routes are injected into the routing table, we can go via redistribution, we can apply routing filters and so on and so forth. To configure fantasy routes, we'll go to the terminal and then we'll use the command routing fantasy and then we'll add some parameters. The first one is count. This is basically the amount of routes to generate. You can see that we can go from zero to more than 4 billion routes. We can use some fantasy route, for example, to generate 1 million routes and try to simulate the routing table on internet. And then we can see how our devices are going to manage that amount of entries. One important point here is that this range is actually the index numbers. So for example, if I say count equals zero, actually this means that I'm going to generate one route. If I say count equal two, that means that this is going to generate three routes because we are going to have the route zero, one, and two. So those values are basically the index, the position in the array inside the fantasy routes structure. So this is the first parameter. Then we have the destination address. This is the supernet slash prefix. For example, if we are going to use the supernet 172.20.0.0 slash 16, then that value is going to be there. It's going to be the value for the DST dash address parameter. 
Then we have the gateway that can be a real IP that is connected to the router or we can generate a lookback interface and then we can add some slash 32 IP addresses and then we can point to that. The idea is just to have these uh, fantasy routes with the active flag. Then we'll go with the prefix length. This is the prefix length to use in the new generated routes. So for example, if we need to generate a slash 20 subnets, so those will come from the supernet. Let's see how we'll implement fantasy routes in our topology, and then you will be ready to play with your lab environment. This is the same topology that I use in the route redistribution video here in the channel. So now we have our SPF domain that is running. We have multiple areas for SPF. And also we have a second routing domain that can be running OSPF, VEP, RIP, for example. In this particular case, that uh, routing domain is running BGP. We have a BGP session between those two devices. The idea is to generate a large amount of routes in that device, and then we are going to redistribute those into the BGP process in this routing domain. And then our five is going to redistribute all the BGP routes into the OFPF routing domain. If I go to R200, we can see that we only have two IP addresses. One IP is providing connectivity with R5, and the second one is a lookback IP. And then we have the BGP session that is established between R5 and this device. But at this point, there are no routes that are being advertised on BGP. If we check the routing table, basically we only have the connected routes. The one for the lookback, slash 32, and then we have the one that is connected to R5. And the idea is that we need to add some routes into the routing table, and then we can redistribute those into the BGP process that is running in this device. Fantasy routes are not BGP specific, so we can create fantasy routes and then we can inject those into the OFPF domain. We'll learn how to do it in OFPF as well in this video. In this router, I will create some routes. Those will be using the supernet 172.20.0.0 slash 16. All the routes will have the prefix 24. So that means that we are going to use 8 bits. 24 minus 16 is equal to 8. So we're going to use 8 bits to generate subnet. So the maximum number of subnets that we can generate is going to be 2 to the power of 8. So this is equal to 256. Let's assume that we want to generate all of them. So we're going to generate 256 routes. So how are we going to do that? First of all, we need to go to the terminal. And here we are going to add the parameters that we covered before. So we'll start with count the number of subnets. So I'm going to say add count 250 Six. But remember, count is showing the index number. So actually I'm going to type 255. And this is going to generate 256 routes. Because that value is going from 0 to 255. And that is 256 routes. Because the 0 is also counting. And then the next parameter that I'm going to use is the destination address, and that is the supernet. So destination address 172.20.0.0 slash 16. Then the next parameter is the gateway. So in this case, I don't have a holder. If I go to IP addresses, we can see that we only have those two IPs. So basically, I'm going to create a loopback interface, and I will assign an IP to that. But before doing that, I will complete the command. So the IP that I will assign in the network address for that lookback is going to be 10, 200, 200, 200. Then the next value, the next value is going to be the prefix length. So we need to generate a slash 24 networks. So that is going to be the prefix length, 24. And now... 
So let's see what is going to happen here in the routing table. I will press enter and you can see that we got that bunch of routes into the routing table. All of them is like 24. So you can see now in red because they are invalid. And that is because that IP in the gateway is not reachable. If I select all of those, we can see that there are 256. Now we'll generate a loopback interface to activate all those routes. We can go to bridge and I will add a loopback interface. Let's call it uh, holder, for example, and I will click OK. And now I will assign an IP to that interface. So I will assign the IP 10, 200, 200, 199. So it's going to be the address and the network is going to be the IP that I configure there on the gateway. This is going to be a point to point address. And now we are going to click apply. After clicking apply, all those routes are active and those routes are ready to be advertised. Now our 200 has several fantasy routes on the routing table. We need to tell the BGP process that is running in the device that we are going to advertise those networks to R5, the BGP peer. So to do that, we need to modify the BGP connection that we have now. So let's go to routing BGP and then under connection, I will go to that connection. So we can see here all the details for establishing that uh, session with that device. But if we go to the extra tab, then we'll find this option output redistribute so if i click there we can check the fantasy option so this is basically telling the vgp process go to the routing table look for all the fantasy routes and advertise those networks to this bgp peer that in this case is r5 and we can click ok we are i'm going to restart this session Remember, this is a lab environment and we don't have issues if we are just uh, restarting that BGP session. Probably you are not going to do that in a network in production. So now the session has been established again. And basically at this point, R200 is advertising all the fantasy routes to the BGP peer, R5. Let's go to R5 and check the routing table in the device. If I go to IP, then routes, I will see all those BGP routes. So you can see dynamic, active, and BGP. So all of them are coming from R200. And now this device is the ASBR. So it's connected to two different routing domains. So we have the routing domain here on the right, and then we have the OFPF domain. So now R5 is going to redistribute those routes that are coming from BGP into the OFPF domain. We have this called route redistribution in one of the previous videos here in the channel. You can check the video above. So now R5 is redistributing all the BGP routes. So if I go to R5, then the OFPF process, and I check the instance, we can see on the redistribute that now is redistributing BGP into the OFPF process. That means that now all these routers inside the OFPF domain are going to have information about those external routes. Let's check, for example, the routing table in R4, the one in area one. So if I go to R4, IP, routes, then we can see all those routes. 172.20.x.0.24. Now they appear as OFPF routes because they are now inside the OFPF process, but they are external routes. If I check the LSAs, all of those routes are external routes. You can see how easy it was to generate that big amount of routes. We can generate thousands of routes by using a single command. And that, of course, is going to help in our learning journey. If we need to remove those fantasy routes, we can do that simply by going to the terminal. Then we can go to routing fantasy. And we can print all the entries and we can see that we have one entry. We can check all the details. Even we can modify those details by using the set command and then the field that we want to modify. But if I need to remove all those entries, I can simply use the remove command. And then I can say I want to remove 
the entry with ID zero. Now all the routes are gone. I don't have any more fantasy routes in this device. What will be the process if we want to redistribute the fantasy routes inside OFPF directly? For example, if we need to generate some fantasy routes in R4, the process to generate the fantasy route is going to be exactly the same. So we are just going to use that command. And then instead of going to the BGP connection, we need to go to the OFPF process. And also there we are going to find an option to redistribute fantasy routes. If I go to the instance, then on the redistribute, we are going to see a field that looks pretty similar to the one that we saw on BGP. We only need to click on fantasy. This device is also going to take those routes from the routing table and they will be available in that OFPF domain. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I see you in the next one. Thank you.